Hello there, and welcome to another of the Spink Medal Department podcasts. This time, I'm pleased to introduce to you our third e-auction. This one running from the 17th of June and closing from noon on the 1st of July. So um, you've got a good amount of time to get online through Spink Live and see all of the 600 or so lots we've got on offer for you this time. And um, again, what a, an interesting third of the year that's passed since uh, we've sat in front of you and told you a few stories of daring do. Uh, here in London, the summer has finally come and the vaccines are following. And I hope that all of you worldwide as well are in the queue and uh, will be receiving yours or have done so. And uh, also we're of course hoping that soon we'll all be able to get out on the road and are looking forward to the Britannia show on the 11th of July uh, here in London. So if you're UK based, it's well worth a trip. And beyond that, we're obviously hoping to see all of our friends uh, worldwide in America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand and, and further afield later in the year, um, touch wood. But what I thought I'd do uh, is show you my favorite um, lot from this e-sale. Um, that is uh, the Exchange George Cross uh, EGM, um, which is a single award uh, awarded to John Henry Farr. Uh, for the aptly named uh, Slough Bomb Mystery of the Summer of 1940. So I'll give you a little bit of background to, uh, to Farr, one of the fighting Farrs, one of eight children. Uh, he was born in Tony Pandy in South Wales in April 1913, and uh, his brother actually became British heavyweight champion in the 1930s. Uh, it's said that, that our man, um, John, rather than his brother Tommy was, was the, uh, the more talented pugilist but actually didn't like um, knocking other chaps out. So he, he had a couple of professional fights and did quite well um, but let his brother uh, take over on that front for the family. And um, John is actually uh, in a number of videos uh, which can be found online uh, when his brother did take the, um, the heavyweight championship. So clearly a large influence and a, a very talented uh, individual. Well, by the outbreak of the Second World War, um, John himself was, uh, had relocated from South Wales and had come up to, to Slough in Berkshire. And um, he was working at the High Alloy Metals factory. Um, this factory was actually producing a really important um, special metal um, called hiduminium. Uh, it's a high-pressure alloy, um, obviously in the, with the name of the company he was working for, in the foundry there, and they were producing pistons and parts uh, for all of the aircraft um, in manufacture by Rolls-Royce and obviously in flight uh, for the Royal Air Force. So a really important role that this small factory was undertaking, uh, so important that at the outbreak of the war, uh, a secondary factory had actually been set up in the Pennines to take the strain away should an event happen at Slough. Well, that event that they had feared happened on the night of the 13th of July 1940. Um, and the, the act that we know is there was a huge explosion which took place uh, at around uh, 10 past 11 um, at night. And it was a vast explosion. It killed three... Uh, members of the foundry outright, at least 30 more were injured. Um, local reports suggested that more were injured, but perhaps at the early stage of the war, reporting you know, vast amounts of, of injuries and, and sad fatalities on the British Isles uh, was seen as um, politically sensitive. So perhaps the numbers were, were suppressed a little. Um, as it came to be, in the heat of the action, um, the brave John Henry, and actually with his brother William Douglas, uh, the pair of them set to work, and I'd actually like to read you uh, the extract from the London Gazette, dated the 26th of July, so it took not quite two weeks for, for John's gallantry to be rewarded. So, on the 26th of July, 1940, the Central Chancery announced um, the award of the Civil Division of the uh, British Empire for Gallantry, the Empire Gallantry Medal, to John Henry Farr, Foundryman, with the following citation. When an explosion occurred recently at a factory in the south of England, he displayed exceptional bravery and devotion to duty. In spite of the grave danger due to molten metal and the risk of electrocution from the loose high-tension cables, 
he removed a colleague from the danger zone. He then returned into the foundry with his brother Douglas. Between them, they cleared two large furnaces, each containing a thousand pounds of molten aluminium. Far and his brother volunteered for that duty, in spite of falling debris, the dangerous condition of the structure and roof, and in complete darkness. As a result of their voluntary efforts, the plant was restored to production days sooner than would otherwise have been the case. So um, John received his Empire Gallantry Medal. Um, his brother received um, the, the Medal of the Order, uh, the, the BEM. And there are a number of things worth uh, picking up from that citation. The first, nothing mentioned of the location, just the south of England. Again, the fact that it mentions aluminium, not the hiduminium being manufactured by the factory. Um, and thirdly, no mention of, of the cause, just an explosion. This is something which was immediately picked up upon. Um, at the time, there were two um, possible outcomes. The first one floated was um, mispractice um, taking place. Some suggested it could be the IRA. That was probably outdone by uh, later investigations which showed um, that the tension cables above, which ran uh, along the ceiling of the factory, um, were actually found in the crater um, underneath where the, 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 the explosion had happened. So the chances are that a, a very, very high-flying German aeroplane of the Luftwaffe was flying over, jettisoned its bomb and um, made the single strike. Um, it's, it's a really interesting one which has led to the file in the National Archives which we've pulled on this. Um, it's the only one to do with the whole of the Second World War with the word mystery in the title. It is still known as the Slough Bomb Mystery. So obviously with, with events as they moved on through the summer of 1940, the start of the Battle of Britain, um, there was little time to investigate in full detail what went on. Um, but what we know for sure um, is the bravery of, of John. Um, the, obviously, with the summer of 1940 going on, uh, on the 24th of September, King George VI uh, instituted the George Cross um, to sit on a par with the Victoria Cross alongside and equal an award for civilians or military personnel, not in the face of the enemy, but showing the utmost gallantry. Uh, as a result, um, so John actually went up to the palace uh, in August 1940 to receive his Empire Gallantry Medal. Um, on the 24th September, with the announcement um, of the George Cross's institution, his award was actually converted uh, into the George Cross that I have in front of me, um, engraved on the back um, with his name and the, the date of the, the London Gazette entry. And so he went up to Buckingham Palace for the second time uh, in 1941 uh, to receive this George Cross from the hands of the King. Um, you know, in terms of the rarity of this award, uh, it, it is of the highest rarity. The George Cross has been awarded just 408 times to date, uh, the latest award being made in 2017, and perhaps one or two um, may be coming in the London Gazette in, in the near future due to a few recent events here in London. But of those 408 occasions, there's just 112 which have been converted from EGM. So, you know, you know, four times as rare as the Victoria Cross, the George Cross. So it's, it's a fantastic civilian award, lots of good interest. Um, and, you know, as we often find with these things, I've obviously mentioned the video entry, um, but also the story uh, of, of the fighting Fars uh, was covered in the Hornet comic. Um, both the front and back covers uh, told the story um, of the brothers, but it, it mainly focuses upon John and his ultimate award of the George Cross. So again, this from the 19, late 1960s, um, when you know tales of daring do were being reproduced, and um, it's, it's a fantastic award. Um, our man uh, passed away in 1973 in Slough. He remained there, um, and this George Cross was last seen here at Spink in 1994. So it's been off the market for 27 years, and um, a fantastic opportunity to acquire a rare. Um, George Cross for actions in the United Kingdom in wartime in, in the summer of 1940. Uh, it carries a pre-sale estimate of 14 to 18,000 and uh, on recent results which we've seen for uh, George Crosses and exchange awards 
um, you know, it has a very good chance of exceeding its estimate. So do go online, do have a look. Please, you're all more than welcome to come back into our recently refurbished offices here at 69 Southampton Row, and we'd be very happy to provide you with any extra photographs or details um, that, that might interest you. Same goes, of course, for all of the rest of the items in the e-auction. And just a reminder, it runs from the 17th of June to the 1st of July, with the lots closing um, at the set intervals from noon. So any more questions, you know where we are. And um, I'll now hand over to Harry, who will tell you a few of his favourite items from the e-sale. Thank you very much. Right, so thank you, Marcus. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about the Joseph Kelly MM, you see here. Uh, Joseph Kelly was born in Manchester in 1885. He served prior to the First World War, but rejoined in order to take part in it in September 1914. Kelly joined the war in France in 1915, uh, entering the trenches around Neuve-Chapelle. We know a little about his career thanks to an article written in the Runcorn Guardian, which states that he was fought on, fought on four different fronts, was mentioned by his commanders twice, and was wounded in the foot, although frustratingly there are limited details about what the fronts were and where he was uh, injured and when. Um, the incident which really intrigues us and for which Kelly won the medal was uh, in December, in, on the 17th of December 1917, uh, on an unidentified section of the line where the 20th Battalion Manchester Regiment were fighting a hotly contested action over 48 hours, holding the line against uh, an enemy attack. Kelly served as a stretcher bearer during that time and continued, despite heavy fire, to ferry wounded comrades back from the front. Um, he continued to serve after the incident and was only awarded the military medal in 1918 when he was invalided back to Britain uh, thanks to a kidney condition uh, and uh, began his stay at the Runcorn Vicarage uh, where he was given medical treatment and where the colonel in charge, Colonel Gemmell, uh, awarded him his medal. Uh, Kelly was then discharged in 1919. This lot is estimated at 140 to 180 pounds. Thank you very much for that, Harry. Really interesting to hear that extra bit of research that's been found out uh, to bring uh, what is a um, straightforward Great War MM to life. And no doubt it will find a good home when the e-auction closes on the 1st of July. So thank you very much, one and all. And um, you know, we look forward to seeing you. You're very welcome to come in and view all these items and um, do be in touch and you can bid via Spink Live now. Thank you very much.